Last, let's take a look at the routing table. So the way that the metric and the administrative distance show up in the routing table, we can see if we take a look more closely at it. So right here for my routing table, I purposely set this up to have three different routing protocols in it, as well as a directly connected route. Now I have an OSPF route, O, how do I know it's an OSPF route? Well, I know it's an OSPF route for two reasons. One, the O character, if I go look up at top here in my key, says O stands for OSPF. The other thing is, is if I scroll across here, I see 192.168.10.0 slash 24, and then in brackets, I see 110 slash 2. Well, 110 is the administrative distance of OSPF. All right? 2 is my calculated metric. So it's what OSPF calculated to be the metric between router 1 and network 192.168.10.0/24. It says I reach that via 10.0.0.2 and I send it out fast ethernet 00. This timer here tells me how long the route has been active in the routing table. Next, I have a D route here. A D route stands for EIGRP. That makes sense, right? Uh, if I look up on my table, D is EIGRP here. Why didn't they use an E? Uh, well, I'm not sure, other than there's some external routes that they wanted to note with an E. Why do they use a D then? Well, they use a D because EIGRP's algorithm to calculate which route to add to the routing table is called dual the diffusion update algorithm. So they named the code here D after the dual algorithm. So an EIGRP route is going to show up as a D. So I know it's EIGRP because it's D there. Look across to my brackets here. The first number here is my administrative distance. The second number here is my metric. And notice that EIGRP uses a different metric value than OSPF does. And that's okay. And when we talk about OSPF and EIGRP in detail in other videos, we'll look exactly how these metrics are calculated. If I scroll down further, I, you can see I have an R here for a RIP route. If I look up at my top, R stands for RIP. Scroll over, I look at my brackets, the administrative distance of 120. RIP uses a hop count as its metric, so it's one hop away to get to that network meaning it's one router away. Once again, that's also going out fast Ethernet 00. Then I also have a directly connected route. My directly connected route does not list the administrative distance. It assumes that you are an intelligent engineer and that you know that directly connected routes have a C in front of them. You can look up the C up at the top here and see that it's connected. And these directly connected routes we always know have an administrative distance of zero. There's one other thing I want to show you in here, and that is the difference between a route on a Cisco routing table that has a classful mask versus one that is subnetted. What classful mask means, it is the subnet mask that is the same as the number of bits that would be in the network portion for the classful address. All right, I'll say that again. So. For example, in 192.168.10.0, that is a class C address. Class C addresses have 24 bits in the network portion. Since they have 24 bits in the network portion, the classful mask for that is going to be slash 24, or 255.255.255.0. So when the subnet mask matches the number of bits in the classful network portion, my route just shows up in the table as it does with this OSPF route with the slash 24 here and with my EIGRP route where I have 172.16.0.0 slash 16. Okay, so when the mask that I have on my network address matches the classful mask for that network, it will show up in the routing table as just one entry. When I subnet the network, it will show up in one of two ways. In the second example here, it says 172.18.0.0 slash 24 is subnetted into one subnet. Now what it's saying here is 172.18.0.0, that is a class B address. Traditionally, it would have slash 16 as its mask. However, you as the network administrator changed the mask on it to something else. You would broke it up into other subnets with a slash 24 mask. 
So now down below it, you see the D route, and this is the actual route here now for 172.18.00 slash 24. So this is called the parent route, and then these are called child routes. All right, so the parent route shows you how it's subnetted, and then the child routes show you each separate route for that particular subnetted network. Last, we have another parent route shown here as 10.0.0.0 slash 8 is variably subnetted into two subnets with two different masks. Here we're saying we learned a RIP route for 10.0.10.0 slash 24, right? And then we also have a directly connected network of 10.0.10.0 slash 30. So our child routes have different masks. So whenever we're reading the routing table, our parent routes here are going to show up. It's going to give us some information about how it's subnetted. But really what we're after is we're after these child routes or the routes where the mask matches the classical portion of our address. And those show us the actual routes in our routing table. So this wraps up the conceptual portion of dynamic routing. Where we need to go from here is we need to get you into configuring routing protocols. Now, since RIP is used so rarely, we're not going to actually learn how to configure RIP, but we are going to learn how to configure OSPF and EIGRP, and we're going to learn how to do it in a way where we can do it with both IP version 4 and IP version 6. So in the ICND 1 series, we're going to configure OSPF very basically. And then in ICND 2, the second series of the CCNA curriculum, we will cover configuring OSPF with a little bit more advanced configuration, as well as IP version 6. This wraps up taking a look at dynamic routing. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in future videos.